Good morning and welcome to the 57th, I think it's 57th, maybe 56th, wow. 56th or 57th episode of Business Unusual, Quantum Leaps on LinkedIn. And we are here in order to make some pretty big high jumps with our prospecting with one of my um, now favorite thought leaders on LinkedIn, Monty Clark. Now, if you haven't checked him out yet, there was a recent study done of all of the top influencers in social media. Gary V, if you're a fan of his, was number one. The list is full of a whole lot of amazingly talented and brilliant social media experts, and Monty was on that list as well. So he's in amazing company. And when I saw that he made that list, and I've also been following him, and paying a lot of attention to how he is engaging on LinkedIn. And I was super excited to invite him to come and talk with us today because I don't know about you, but things are just the wild, wild west right now on social media and trying to figure out how to lasso this pony and put a saddle on it is, is not something that I'm figuring out at any great speed. So I thought, let's go to the expert, and Monty is the expert on this topic. So Monty, do you want to give just a really quick introduction, and then I have so many questions for you, and we can dive in. Yeah, I'll do it. Thank, for one, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate the opportunity, and uh, for everybody joining us, forgive my green screen. I can't figure out how to get my... Uh, it's good I have a really super cool background for you, but I can't put it on there, so... You're green. <laughs> It's, hey, it's, it's, it's been yeah. Wait a minute, it's Got not St. Patty's Day. Yep. But uh, I've, been in, I've been in marketing for and sales really for 25 years, mostly with my own company. I spent five years as VP of marketing for a local company here in Kansas City called QGC. Left that two years ago to uh, start back up um, doing what I'm doing right now. Decided, you know, I'm going to – one of the things with – with marketing companies, those they're kind of revolving doors. You know, you have a client for a year or so, and then they decide either you're um, not as creative as they want you to be, or they're not producing the results. And so, I wanted to do something where uh, I could make work for myself. If I could make it work for myself, and I wanted to try and make it work for somebody else, see if I could uh, give that over to somebody, if you would, and see if they could make it successful. Once I was able to do that, then bring that into clients. So today I help companies bridge the gap, if you would, between their marketing and sales departments, because there's always a great divide between marketing and sales and creating your brand recognition and authority and then trying to do sales. So um, I come in and help companies um, understand the importance of their brand messaging how to create engaging messaging for their brand that then their salespeople can then take, share themselves, create their own trust, expertise, and authority while they're building up their own personal brand. And it's kind of a rising tide floats all boats scenario. So that's primarily what I do myself. And so I'm going to let you take it away for Fantastic. a question. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. And it's funny, when we were talking about putting the presentation together today, we were digging into a couple of different options we could do. One of them was actually posting a slide deck and working through it. And I thought it would be a lot more fun. And we did one of these with Dan Staup, and he did a phenomenal job with um, diving in and actually showing us different things on LinkedIn. And that was so much fun. And Monty's going to do the same thing with us. So it's mm -hmm. a matter of he is here not just to sit back and say, yeah, go do this. But he's here saying, this is how I do it. Now, with that being said, when we started this conversation this morning and we were getting ready, my big question that I had for him is how on earth do you keep up? And right now, I think one of the biggest challenges that all of us are facing are all of these changes that have taken place with the algorithm and what used to work to get things highly visible on LinkedIn, it just isn't working now. So can you kind of, let's just kick things off with what you see is shifting as far as the algorithm, and then let's talk about how we should be navigating based on that. So start with what's changed. Sure. Um, it, if you've been following LinkedIn at all um, over the past really three weeks, 
LinkedIn's made significant changes, and they do this, they, they really do do this every year around this time. They'll come up with big algorithm changes and, um, and add different features to the platform. So last year they came out with stories and, and different things, if you remember that. This year they've added different things to your profiles that you can do, um, and of course they slow roll this stuff out. So, um, you know, it's part of their testing process, if you would. Um, they started it in Brazil and down in Australia and just barely here in the, in the U.S. And so now there are uh, more and more people are starting to get access to that. But um, unfortunately, they, it, it's very slow in terms of how they put it out sometimes. So a lot of people, if you can look at my screen here, you know, the, the service providing services, a lot of people still don't even have that section. So um, be patient um, with the new things that are coming out, but um, they are setting uh, a few things up for people to uh, only have their follow button, which you can set that up in your settings already anyway, but um, it will allow you to create a little video here um, as an introduction to yourself. And if you have LinkedIn Live, which still tons of people don't have LinkedIn Live, when you go live, it will um, allow that to be displayed up in your header image up here as well. So there's a bunch of changes Fantastic. to profiles and stuff and types of profiles that they were making that aren't, you know, it's not significant in terms of the average user. But in terms of the algorithm changes, um, there hasn't been substantial algorithm changes, but over the past few weeks, I have noticed some things that I can talk to you about. Uh, most, the biggest change that they've made is in with um, sending connection invites. And so if you're a Sales Navigator user, which is the paid version of, sale, of LinkedIn, um, they have reduced the amount of connection requests that you can send out from 100 per day to 100 per week. So, which is a, an, a very substantial change. So the reason that they have done that is because of the high vol volume of direct message spam that people are getting. So um, if with sending out 100 uh, connections per day, what that opened up was um, a large number of automation tools. So it was almost like every week there'd be a new automation tool come online that you could, that people could use that would, um, you build your list with Sales Navigator and it just automatically goes out and connects and connects and connects. Um, but if you've been watching uh, your feed at all, there's also a lot of um, people that had been complaining about the fact that, and you probably know this yourself, that when you hit your uh, LinkedIn account, there's just message after message, and it's just pitch, 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 pitch. Right? So Don already messaged and said, "Hooray for the reduction!" Because I'm, yes. I'm in there with the holy cow. Can you spam me about anything else today? Really? Exactly. Exactly. So you know, um, when I was talking to you before we started the recording, I said one of the ways that I keep up is you have to try and get into the head of LinkedIn, if you would, and figure out why and why they would come out with some of these things. From a business perspective, why would they do this, right? So reducing the number of connection requests is an attempt to bring the value of the platform back up. Because one of the things that LinkedIn is known for is having a much higher value audience than the other platforms. You got a lot right. of decision makers on this platform, right? Well, if and if all you kick us off, we're not going to stick around. Exactly. If it just becomes a spam platform, people are going to dive off of it like crazy. So they also wanted to eliminate um, as best they could the automation. So now it just makes more sense to go out and actually do what you should be doing is looking at people's profiles, looking at their content, following their content, then connecting them with um, a solid customized message to the person instead of just a kind of a, oh, I don't know, a random message that is generic, just yeah. generic. Yeah. So I Absolutely. think that's going to be a, a very good change for the platform. Um, what I've seen in the past few weeks was a huge spike in views. So if you've been posting out on the platform, probably the past three weeks, you've seen an elevation in your views if you're getting engagement to that content. But I've also now seen that it is 
tailing off. So they're, they can kind of open the spigot, if you would, and, and let views flow for a while. Um, but they're now tightening in a little bit again. It's still much more than it was more than a, more than a couple months ago. Um, the other thing that they have been doing is really have been really boosting uh, polls. <laughs> if you've been on LinkedIn, you it's like every third post is a poll. Um, they've now thankfully started to close the faucet on that one and um, polls are getting much less views. But if you did a poll in the past three weeks, um, I know people that are getting 50, 60,000 views with just one poll. So wow. now, now it's back down. Now it's back down to reasonable, you know, views, two, 3,000 if you do a good poll. But again, okay. the reason why they're shutting it back off now is they, they will boost a particular component um, that they want people to start using and engage in. People weren't doing a lot of polls, so they increased its views. Uh, that flooded everybody to polls. And so at, at first, all the polls were all business related and really solid content. Now it's, what do you like better, dogs or cats? You know, so as soon as they see a degradation <laughs> of, um, you know, content quality, then they reduce that. Video was the same way. When video first came or was launched on the platform, you would get thousands of views by just doing a video. Then people started doing video competitions where you do a video every day of just holding up your phone and saying, hey, how's it going? As soon as that kind of content, the video content started degrading, they shut down views. So now you don't get a ton of views, but I know we had a question about video and why why to do them, so I can speak to that as well. So that, those are just briefly some of them. Okay. So with that being said, then let's talk about, and this is one of our many questions that we have, what are the best posts that do get views, interactions? I know that's one of the burning questions for so many of us. So what on earth do you post that gets engagement, not just views? Okay, so um, there's, there's two ways to get engagement on the platform, and you gotta have both of them. Um, mm -hmm. Still, text posts are still my highest performing, um, just straight text. Text now, only? Text only. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, more short form text posts do better than long form text posts. You know, you have 1,300 characters. So um, if you're using 1,300 characters, those tend to get less than just shorter ones. Um, but there is a... Um, there's a strategy to all posting and it goes hook, story, call to action. Okay, so if you can if you can think about your posts, no matter what they are, whether you're doing a text post, a video post, or anything else, um, remember hook, story, call to action. Hook is the very most important one. Okay, so the hook is, I you know, there's all kinds of stuff out on LinkedIn. And we're bombarded just daily with all kinds of content. So how do you get attention? Headlines that hook matter. is the very, yeah, the title. The, the reason why people are saying the title of this, um, you know, webinar that we're doing right now, that's the hook, okay? Pull people in, give them a reason to interact, engage with you. And then if you can tell a story around that, or if you can provide some really solid information that they can learn from, personalize that to yourself so that people can understand you and get to know you and your content and, and who you are and what it's like to work with you. So focus on that within the meat, if you would, of your uh, post, and then always have some form of a call to action, whether that is, a, and the best form to call to action is a question, but don't make it a close-ended question. So an example of that is if you're sitting around your, with your kids at dinner at night and you say, how was school? Answer you're going to get is good. Fine. Okay. Right? Yeah. If you say, tell me the best thing that happened to you today and the worst thing that happened to you today, that's an open-ended question. They have to think about it. They have to respond to it. So on your post, create open-ended questions that get people engaged make thought-provoking statements that people will want to share their own thoughts on, 
And then from an algorithm standpoint, understand that you have to get engagement to your post within the first 20 to 30 minutes, or it's going to die on the vine very quickly. Oh. So, yep. so if you're not getting engagement, it is because you're not getting engagement quickly enough. So when you post, LinkedIn is only going to show it to about 20% of your connections. So however big your connection lists are, if you only have 500 connections, you're only getting 20% of that. Okay, so, if, so um, that's the reason why you want to try and work a building, um, and it can be your following. It doesn't have to necessarily be your connections. Okay, so I have a lot more following than I do have connections right now. So as much as you can build that up, you want to do that as quickly as you possibly can because it will um, get your it will get your content in front of more people. Now it will follow it through hashtags, which hashtags on personal posts aren't as good as hashtags on corporate posts, but you will, um, you, you will want to work towards building up what we call your tribe. Okay, so how do you build up a tribe? You go, a tribe, let me first say what a tribe is. A tribe is somebody that's going to be interested in your content, interested in what you have to say, they are creating content themselves for the most part, and they will come in and they will engage your content on a daily basis. When it shows up in their feed, you're of interest to them and they will engage you. So how I have built up my network is you go out and you find people who are active on the platform daily, and they have to be active daily, Monday through Friday. Okay, and they have to be consistent with that. So go out and engage their content. Put really good, solid um, comments on their content and do that consistently. Now in time, and it won't take very long, in a few weeks, they will notice that you are there on a daily basis. And as you are, there's high likeliness that they will probably come and engage your content. Now, the term influencer on LinkedIn is not the, not the same as what it is on other platforms. Influencers, um, there's very few influencers, if you would, and LinkedIn calls people influencers like Gary V. Okay? Um, but in my mind, influencers are people that are active daily on the platform. They are creating content and engaging other people every single day. If you can find those people that will then come and engage your content on a consistent basis, it will bring their feed over into yours. So people that follow my content, when I go out and I, con and I comment on other people's stuff, it shows up in their feed, right? And then there's high, li high likeliness that they will come and engage that as well. So what you comment on, you want it to be consistent with your own personal brand, if you would. You want it to be um, something that as people are coming and engaging your stuff, they will want to go engage as well. Right. So the more, the more of those people that you can get to come and engage you on a daily basis, now when you post and you have to be consistent in your posting at a specific time every day. So if you post at 7.30 every day like I do, you, you also want to be um, strategic about when you post there too. I'm in Central Standard Time. So I will post at 7.30, I know it's 8.30 on East Coast, and then I know I'll pick up um, Mountain Time and Pacific Standard Time as it goes across the US. And then overnight, you know, then I'll pick up the rest of the world, so to speak, if they wanna see this, if my content, of which I do. But um, I post at Central Standard Time because I know a large amount of the people that engage me on a regular basis are in Central Standard Time. So whichever time zone you're in, you want to you want to post it when most people are active in that time zone, and mm -hmm. that will help you in building your um, your following as well. So that is a change. So it used to be, and if you scheduled things at the exact same time, they thought you were using a scheduling or automation tool, and you didn't get quite as many views on those posts. Was what I had several of my clients that were bumping up against. So yeah. So the the problem in that scenario is actually not the automation. The problem is if, and I love this term. I just heard this term the other day. Is if you post and ghost, right? The problem that most people have when they use automation is it does it all for them, and then they're not on the platform. 
LinkedIn is entirely concerned and cares about the people who are actively engaged on the platform and they are there. So when you post at 7.30, whether you automate it, because I'll, I'll automate some of my posts, whether you automate it or do it yourself on the platform, you have to sit and babysit that post for the next 30 minutes and reply to everybody who puts a comment. So if, if you post at 7.30 and then you have 10 people that go comment, but you're not back to respond to them two hours later, it's almost as though they didn't comment at all. It will kill your post. You won't get near the views. So if you post at 7.30 and you have 10 people that come in and comment and you then go in and comment back to them and engage them, LinkedIn knows you're engaged on the platform. They know it's you and it's, it doesn't care whether it's automation. So LinkedIn really doesn't care about the automation component. They care about your engagement component. That makes if sense. LinkedIn, if LinkedIn didn't want you to use automation, they wouldn't give their API to these different automated tools like Hootsuite and stuff like that. Um, they wouldn't allow it. So they do allow it. You just have to be engaged. Makes sense. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about the text post work and the when to post, how often should we be posting on LinkedIn? Okay, so there's um, been, you know, you have to look at how long your posts last because um, traditionally what we've known about posting is if you post at 7.30 in the morning and you get, let's say you get 10 likes and 10 comments. If you post again within the next two hours, you will have to get 20 likes and 20 comments to come up to the same level that you got in that first post in terms of views. Okay. And it will effectively kill that first post. So you have to wait at least four hours. But what I do is um, I will only, I will typically only post once a day. Now, my reason for doing that is because I will always post at 7.30 and I don't want to oversaturate my market, the people that follow me. I don't, you know, I want to show up once a day. It's, it's kind of like if you, if you ate a certain sandwich for breakfast, you love that sandwich, it's great. But if you had to eat it for lunch and dinner, you wouldn't love it as much, right? <laughs> so right. I, I want to give my audience, if you would, those that follow me, um, my content in the morning, and then I want to be done with that until the next day because I want them to continue to enjoy it and come back to it. I do know people that post eight, nine times a day, and they'll get a fraction of the views, but combined, it'll be, it'll be you know, upwards of the same amount. So, you know, that's their strategy is they feel like they want to be continually in front of people. I don't agree with that strategy. I, I think you build up your audience, you get in front of people um, by delivering high quality, high value content to them that they will engage on a daily basis. And then your following will increase naturally that way, organically, right? But if you're oversaturating that market with your content, they will engage it less. So makes sense. And another thing that you can do though, is you can watch um, how long your posts live if, in, if you would. So I know that if I post at 7:30 in the morning and I get a high volume engagement, if I get 20, 30, 40 comments, you know, and equally so on the likes within the first hour or two, I know that that will, will carry on and produce me views mostly throughout the day. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill that post. I'm, I'm not gonna override it, if you would, by posting again. Mm -hmm. If I have a post that I don't get a ton of engagement on, it could be depending on the day, you know, just that when people are actually active on the platform. Um, when you're on the platform 12 hours a day, <laughs> like I am, you know, you kind of get a feel for when people are there and what days are good and what days are not. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your content. But if I post at 7.30 and I don't get the volume of engagement that I think there should be um, at that time, by noon, 
usually by noon, I will know what that post is going to get. Okay, so and and I can under I am pretty good at this point now of saying, okay, if I get this amount of comments and this amount of likes, I know what view count that will get on a daily basis. Okay, so if I want to post again, if I have a uh, post that doesn't do all that well, I won't post again until probably 4.30. So at 4.30 now, people are getting done with their days. They're getting back onto LinkedIn to check it out, see what updates and stuff like that. You know, between 8.30 to 4.30, people are working. And so, you know, you've got a little window there in lunch for people to um, to check out LinkedIn and see what's going on. But any more than that, you know, you're not going to get a high volume engagement. Okay, got it. So we've talked about the posting. Now let's talk a bit about content and leveraging content on LinkedIn. So if you've talked about how you've got texts or text messages that you would use primarily, what if you're selling, because I've got several folks on the call that I know are selling very complex solutions to a market that is really difficult to get to. So if you want to feature your expertise and really stand out, what are your recommendations for doing that? Um, okay, so I will lead you over now to my profile over on my other screen here. And with my header message, I'll, I'll kind of lay the foundation for this. Okay, I'm going to close out my camera because I want to follow along. Okay. So, you determine success by your ability to communicate the primary problem you solve to a specific person who agrees to the value of your solution. I, I facetiously say, sounds simple, because it's, it's not overly. A lot of people, um, what they want to do on LinkedIn is talk about what they do, or they want to talk about... Um, the values, right, of what they offer. If you focus on the primary problem, and and part where well, another way that people get hung up is that they'll they're they're too broad, right? They have too many solutions, or or they solve too many problems for people. So Absolutely. when I used when I used to teach my master class, what I did was I I tell people, okay, so if we, you were walking, if you were standing at the edge of the Sahara Desert and you decided, I'm just going to walk across this desert. I'm going to go on a hike today and I'm going to cross this desert. Okay, two days, no, it won't even be two days. At the end of the day, I come walking up behind you. You're crawling in the sand. By that point, you're probably cold because of the temperature shift, but you've been blistered by the sun. You've got holes in your jeans. Um, and you're almost pretty much just laying there on the ground. If I come walking up to you on a camel and you look up at me, what's the primary problem that you have? You need water. Yeah, Okay. I'm thirsty. You're thirsty. Yeah, if I don't give you water, you're going to die. Okay, so now you've got a sunburn, right? You probably have sun blisters. You're cold. You might need a coat. Um, you need a ride. You probably can't walk. <laughs> Yeah. So you've got all these other you've got all these other problems, but if I don't give you water, you're going to die, right? So now, if I give you water, you will also trust me to take care of all the other problems that you have. You'll also take sunscreen from me. You'll also take a jacket. You also hop up on my camel and let me take you wherever you want to go. So the primary thing, if you want to get in front of people and you want to start building inbound leads is consistently and effectively communicate the problem that you solve in a number of ways through your content. Okay, so that should be um, specifically in the problem that people have, why they have the problem, the solution that you have to that problem, and don't worry about your competitors seeing it. Don't worry about other people, about people saying, oh, well, that's the solution. I'll just take that and I'll do that. People won't. People want the solution from you and they will come to you for it if you communicate it. You're not giving all your goods away and you'll lose business. It's actually the opposite. People are busy and people, the people have the problem for a reason. It's typically not because they don't know how to solve it. It's because they won't solve it for themselves. 
or so, they're so, they're getting stuck and they need they yeah. desperately need help in order to get over where they're stuck because nothing is ever as easy as one two three exactly exactly and if you can and if you can have help to overcome it now let's take it right so provide help um, in the manner of solving somebody's problem do that consistently if you have a corporate page do it consistently on your corporate page share it over to your personal profile and you in time and it will take a little bit of time but in time it's i equate it to farming right you're planting seeds you're watering those seeds you're fertilizing those seeds in time you're going to have a crop grow and then you will eventually be able to harvest that crop because people will know you they will like you they will trust you and they will come to you to solve that problem fantastic that did an amazing job of answering the question. So, Go. and then we've had, we had some really good comments. So I'm really excited. I hope y'all are going to stick around for the discussion as soon as our session wraps up, because there's some really good points that I do think we want to dive into just a little bit deeper, but I got a long list here that we still want to get through. So one of the really big questions that consistently comes up is about sales navigator. So yes. that's the premium account that you spend not an insignificant amount of money to get. If they're reducing some of the functionality within that, why would you want, why would you want it or do you need it? If you are trying to build a business or do or sales of any kind with LinkedIn, you still want to have sales navigator. Um, okay. Can you do without it? Yes, you can. Um, but it, it will take you just a little bit more effort. They make it a little easier if you have Sales Navigator. You'll have to justify the cost. But for me, even at $90 a month, you know, I don't know of anything else that will provide the kind of value that Sales Navigator will provide for that cost. So, you can do a little bit more of a deep dive into, you can get highly targeted into who you're trying to go after. But for me, it comes down to um, building these lead lists and, and then the steps under which you go about to um, communicate and navigate that. So if I, I'll show you what I do for my own lead lists and then you guys can copy it or modify it to your own uses, okay? So what I will do is I will do a search and I'll just show you what my search is. Um, so they give you all these custom filters, okay? I'll, re I'll remove anything that I've already seen and everything else. I'm only looking for the US. I want my first and second degree. And actually I only want my, my second degree. I don't go into third degree because I typically have plenty to choose from within my second. Um, so I'm looking for companies, you know, smaller companies. I'm looking for directors and owners and I'm looking for these specific titles and people that speak English. Okay, so once I have this list, I will open these up and then I will hand select those, if you would, oops, and drop them into what I say is my, uh, what this is my sales funnel, if you would, okay? So anybody that I'm wanting to research, I'll quickly go through the list and I will click save and I'll drop them into a lead research. I won't go look at every single profile right out of the gate when I do a search. I'll drop them into a folder called lead research. Okay, now when I now when I look at this list, okay, now I will open up each of these people. If it, let's just say it's Susan Kane, um, and if you're on the call, I want to connect with you. But <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I will look at this list. I'll determine whether or not I want to um, engage Susan, and and so what I will do from here is I'll click and I'll go view her on LinkedIn, okay? I'm not going to do it here because one of the things that is 
dumb, if you would, about Sales Navigator is they almost create two separate um, direct messaging channels. So one on Sales Navigator and one on your regular LinkedIn. I want all my stuff to be on regular LinkedIn because that's where I'm doing it, right? So I will go engage her um, by viewing her on LinkedIn, okay? So it'll open up her profile. What I'm mostly interested in is how active is Susan on LinkedIn? Is she, is she somebody that when I connect with her, I can expect that she'll get back to me right away? Or am I gonna have to wait three weeks for her to respond? So I'm gonna see what she's doing, okay? She's a top LinkedIn influencer, and, and, and mostly what I'm concerned about is what's her activity? So she's clearly somebody that's active. She's got two million followers. So I'm gonna jump up to her activity, and what I'm mostly concerned in is her posts. Okay, so two hours ago she posted, so I know she's active. Okay, I'll review this post. If this is a post that I like, I'll put a like and a comment. Same thing down here. I'll go through two or three of her posts. I'll find stuff that I can engage with. And I'll like it and I'll comment. Okay, now once I've done that, I will not send her a connection request right now. All right, once that I've done that, then I will unsave her here, which I'm not going to do because um, I haven't done that yet. I will unsave her here and I will drop her into a different lead list that is my connection request. Okay, so I want to engage them first. If I engage any of their content first, they will be notified of that engagement. So the next time that they're on, they will see my name. If I put a comment, I will make sure that I tag them in the comment. They will definitely be notified of that and they will respond. At any point that they respond to me, I will immediately send them the connection request with a message. Really enjoyed this piece. I really enjoyed this post, right? Okay, but if I'm just following, then, or if I just put a like on something, I'll drop them into my connection request. Now, a day or two later, I will come back to that list and I will go back out to them. I'll review their, their profile again and pick out something that's personalized to them in addition to the content that I commented on, and I will put a custom connect message, right? 90% of the time they will connect with you. If you wanna get in front of people and you want to connect with people, that is the way to do it, right? Wow, so, okay, can I stop you here for just a second? Cause I wanna yes. make sure everybody gets this, cause this is solid gold. So what you just outlined is eight touches prior to making a connection request. Because what you did is you went and viewed their profile. So that's yeah. one, they see, you, they see you viewing the profile. You're viewing the posts. You go in and comment on multiple posts or you like multiple posts to see their yes. engagement. And then you wait and then come back and then you yes. send the connection request. Correct. So that is massively different, but it's brilliant because, you know, if you think about marketing is you know, supporting that buyer journey and it's building that brand and that impression. Mm -hmm. Sales is prompting that engagement. So what yes. you've done is a lot of the heavy lifting of navigating that eight to 22 touches already and then they're top of mind with you or you're top of mind with them. So, exactly. now, so let, cool. Let me, let me add to that for you too. Okay, so let's say Steve Smith is somebody that I wanna to talk to and he's the president and the owner of um, this Equipment FX, okay? So I will go and I will view him on LinkedIn. Now, I haven't looked at him yet, so I don't know what his activity is. So we'll check that out. So again, I'll take I'll take a look at his profile, scroll down through it, quickly read. I won't I won't click open see more, right? I I can typically understand what I need to understand about him pretty much right there. But I'll jump down to his activity. I'll see how many followers he has and I'll jump down to the activity. Now, it just their post alone doesn't give you all the story cuz there's a lot of people that don't post themselves, but they're still active in their in their activity. So, he liked this this was, she posted two days ago. 
um, but he liked it today, right? So he's, um, he's still active on the platform. Now, if they have no posts here, one, one strategy you can do is to also like something that they liked, right? And then call that out when you're doing the connection message of saying, hey, I noticed you, you know, like this Kim Sawyer's post about, you know, this congratulations, whatever. I mean, you can do that. But if you go to his post, let's say he doesn't have any connective or uh, see two weeks ago, which isn't overly long, but that tells me really kind of if he didn't have a lot of activity and this was two weeks ago, it tells me about how long he's going to connect and take to right. connect with me. Okay. So if I have a pretty standard rule that if you don't connect with me within two weeks, I'll withdraw my connection request. But this guy may not be as active if he was only two, posted two weeks ago. I can expect, and I'm going to put a note in my, um, on his account then on Sales Navigator. Um, you can add notes. Okay, so I, I'll add a note here that says, you know, he's last active two weeks ago. Expect longer connection time. Okay. Right. So now if he, um, is not active, but you really want to talk to him. You really want to get a hold of him. Okay, one of the things that you can do is check out. Um, sorry, I got to remove my window. So I got a quick question while you're doing this. So no, if ahead. you um, if you view somebody's profile in Sales Navigator, is it evident that you viewed them, or do yep. you have to actually? Okay, so you don't have to go into your into your other nope. account and view them so it's visible. Yeah, it, it'd be, it's, oh, you're talking about if I open this right here? Yeah, so you looking uh, at his profile no. right now, does he see that you viewed him? No, no, he does not. He does not. Okay. Once I hit him on LinkedIn, then he'll view it. But, okay. however, you can see that he's put contact information here, right? So he's got his Twitter account here. Okay, so if I want to okay. talk to him right away, he may be on Twitter a lot more than he is on LinkedIn. Or he might yeah. get a notifi notification on Twitter. Okay, so I will go and I will follow him here, and then you can send him a direct message on Twitter. So that's another way. LinkedIn ties closely with Twitter, by the way. So you can yes. um, you can tweet somebody. You can at mention them on Twitter. Uh, same thing as you can do on LinkedIn, and that gives you two uh, platforms that you can potentially um, get some communication from him on. Right. All right. Now, if that doesn't work. If I can't get that, I'm going to go back to his profile. And I'm going to jump down to his experience. I'm going to go to his company. And I'm going to really quickly just do some research about his people. All right, I'm going to see. Well, this isn't a good example because he was, he's only got one. But let's say he had 15 people. Let's say it was 200 mm -hmm. people. Okay. I'm going to go then. Is that me? I apologize, folks. Let me. I don't know where that's coming from. So, um, there's a chirp somewhere well. in the background, but that's okay. It just adds to the suspense. Yeah, hopefully that goes away. My apologies. I don't see where that's coming from at all. Um, so anyway, if I, if let's say he has 200 people here. Good night. Bear with me. Let's see if I can figure out what that is. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I had a timer set on something or what, but um. Okay. So let's say it's 200 people here. I'm going to go down the list, the people that I think might be the closest to him. So I'm going to go through his C-suite. If I and I'm going to check out their activity, and I'm going to see if they're active on the platform. If I can't get anybody there, I'm going to go another step down and I'm going to check out their activity. I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to find somebody that's active on this platform. I'm going to do the exact same process that I just talked to you about there. I'm going to connect with them and I'm going to get in a conversation with them. If I can get in a conversation with them, I know that I can work my way up through the channel to get to him. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get a hold of anybody on this platform. If you can't get to them directly, you go through the people in their company you establish rapport, you be interested in them, it's a conversation, right? But you can also let them know, I'd really like to get in touch with Steve. And how can I do that? 
lot of times people will group chat you with Steve mm -hmm. or with the person that you want to get in contact with. Or they will say the best way to do that is through their email. Now, a lot of people will put their email in this contact information. I do yes, not leave do. my one step, I do not leave my only connection process to LinkedIn to be able to get in front of somebody, somebody that I really want to get in front of. I will use all of my resources that I have. So if I have Twitter, I have their website, I have email, I could very easily come up with his email through a number of resources that are available to anybody. Um, you can Google his name and you can find out where he is on his, where he is on his other platforms, right? Right. Wherever he is, I'm going to go and I'm going to make myself known. The more that I can make myself known, the quicker you're going to be able to get in front of him. So, okay. One thing that I do want to also bring up here is the fact that I want everybody to be kind of aware of this because this is another nugget. So what you have just shared is multiple avenues that you can reach and connect with someone because one of the shifts that we've noted since the pandemic is that before it used to take one to two touches or one to two attempts to reach people that even wanted to talk to you. And if they even want to talk to you, so they're your customer, they're your friend, they're your family member. I mean, it's taking six to eight attempts to get a hold of people now because of the massive amount of information coming our way and the fact that everybody has glommed onto all these platforms and they're, it's just, you get lost in the noise. So what you've just summarized that is such great insight is a way that you are going to reach out to connect with them across multiple platforms and have that opportunity to connect and find them wherever they are. It's not about, trying to reach them once and if you don't get there then it's up oh, they're just too hard to get to you know you've just outlined you've got to be persistent and it does take anywhere from six to eight attempts to have a first conversation which is quite a bit higher than it was pre-pandemic so you've yeah, done a great yeah. job of using this yeah no, let me add to that if i could um and let me add to it with a warning if you reach out to that person, if you spend this time and you reach out to that person and it becomes very evident that you're just reaching out for a pitch, you've wasted all of your time. So yes. no pitch. Do not pitch when you're reaching out to them. You must, must, must establish rapport with that person. Did you all hear that? Did you hear that? I want to make sure that we, I want to make sure that everybody got that because yep. that seems to be the big no, no that everybody's doing. It's like, yeah. So, so let me back it up to, to March of 2020. Okay. So in March of 2020, you know, our entire country was shut down. Business all went home right now, just because business was home doesn't mean that business could stop. Business still continued, yeah. but mm -hmm. prior to March 2020, we had a sales process that looked like this. Hello, hello, hello. Right, it's it's smile and dial. It's send out mass emails, try to get in front of people. It's go knock on doors. It it's a tr it's kind of an old, if you would, traditional sales process. Right now, 2020 happened. LinkedIn's usership went from this up to this. Right. Okay, everybody got right. on LinkedIn. All sales processes, if you would, all jumped onto LinkedIn. Yes. The downside of that is old sales process also jumped onto LinkedIn. So now you have so early car sales, 1980. Approach. That's right. You've got smile and dial approach yep. and a numbers game that got dumped onto LinkedIn, which yes. is at the beginning why we said that they change it now to 100 per week. Okay, so if you want to get in front of somebody and you want to take notice, you got to spend some time. Once you get there, you can kill it and blow it immediately if you jump into your pitch too quickly. So right. let me go back to what we started out with when we said this. If you determine success, you determine success by your ability to communicate a problem you solve to a specific person who agrees to the value of that solution, you only want to be talking to the people who you can solve a specific problem for. 
Right. Then when you have a conversation with them, you need to ask questions that are not pitchy sales related questions to understand if they have that problem and they are a lead to you. And if they not are, what's keeping you up at night. Yeah, no. If they are a lead to you, if you've established that they have a problem you solve, I promise you that they will want to hear that solution. And then it is not a pitch. It. it is just yes. simply a conversation of how you can solve their problem and you will do business. It's that an organic evolution LinkedIn. of a relationship, which is, that's, right. that's what the platform is all about. So it is, fantastic. The, it is the term social selling. Mm -hmm. Yes, social, social people. <laughs> That's that's kind of important. Okay, so there is a there are two more really big points, but I want to talk first about one of my most pressing questions, engagement pods. So that's something that you mentioned that is yep. newish on LinkedIn. Fill us in on that. Well, actually LinkedIn or I mean engagement pods have been around forever. Um but, you know, what there there's a big um <laughs> There's a big debate on whether or not pods, you should use pods um, to engage your content. And remember when I said, you've got to get engagement to your posts within 20 to 30 minutes, right? Okay, well, um, there's pods in a good way and there's pods in a bad way. And by yeah. the way, LinkedIn highly promotes pods. They do it themselves. They do it by filling your feed with the people that you engage regularly. So okay. they want you to go engage people that you have engaged before. Right. It Relationships. Is really, that's right. It is really a pod. They just don't call it a pod. The newsfeed is your own personal pod. Okay. Because okay. you'll see first, they will show you first the people that you engage. Bad pods are people who go create, you know, groups of 200 or so people and their only responsibility is to go like and comment a post no matter what it is. Okay, so then you'll get a bunch of junk, bunch of junk content filling up the platform and a bunch of people that are falsely basically promoting that content without doing any of the work of establishing their, um, their followers, their, their tribe so to speak, right? It's just a collection of people that are then manipulating the algorithm. Okay. But if, but if you have a group of people who you have nurtured and organically built up that likes your content, then, and you let them know, and they know, hey, I'm gonna be posting at 7.30 every day. And you, they produce good quality content, and you produce good quality content, they're gonna show up in your feed, you're gonna show up in their feed, and you guys can engage each other, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, even if you take the groups of people that you engage on a regular basis who do that, and they and it has to be that, it has to be quality content, where you go, if you look, go and look at my feed and on my posts, there's not nice post, thanks for sharing. There's like paragraph long conversations that I have on my content. And it's because over time, organically, I have established people who are interested in what I have to say in my content, and they will go engage me in conversation. And that is what you want. You Absolutely. want conversational content on your posts. And then when you are going out and engaging too, you never wanna just drop nice posts or thanks for sharing. You wanna engage people in conversation because what people don't understand is the content that you put out in terms of your comments is also content. It creates content. And I've connected with many people just simply through the engagement that I've had on their posts by asking good questions and by getting into conversation with them. So does that answer your question? It does. And that actually speaks also to what you began the conversation with today is identifying that audience of people that you truly want to foster or nurture. So mm -hmm. it's being purposeful, identifying them, reaching out, engaging with their post, engaging with their content, 
so that you gain a deep and intimate understanding of them prior to you even attempting to reach out and build a relationship so that your first interaction right. with them will deliver value. The right. other thing I noticed, and this is this has happened to me, is when I engage with their content, in a lot of cases, my best relationships on LinkedIn are not necessarily with prospects, they're with other influencers because I'm all about referrals. So it's right. funny, through conversations with you and people like you, I've ended up with amazing people reaching out to connect with me that right. fit that ideal target profile. And they're reaching out to me because of the conversations that we're having. So mm -hmm. it's amazing how this truly does work in terms of building your authority and your credibility. And also people really want to work with nice people. They don't want to work with jerks. Yeah, yeah likability. Holy mm -hmm. cow. I mean, this is such a great way of getting that likability factor. Okay. So we have covered Holy cow, so much ground, and we're going over on time. So I want to respect the time of everybody that's here. Get us wrapped up. We are sharing. Okay, so I shared in the questions the link to Monty's book. If you registered for today, you will be receiving a copy of this recording. If you are listening to this on LinkedIn, or not LinkedIn, but YouTube, I will include the recording link in this, the description of, or not the recording link, but the book link so that you can go and download it. Monty's got it available. It's free on Kindle and it's an amazing book. So I've already dug into it. So a lot of this great insight that he has shared with us today, he makes very, very available out there. So go check him out. With that though, I have a lot of clients that are just exactly that person that you mentioned earlier. That's the, yes, show us the way, but help us along. So how would someone engage you to help them with their own LinkedIn? Um, there's a number of ways. Um, starts by connecting with me, messaging me, right? And, and letting me know that, that you have a need. Um, for a lot of people, I will, um, I, I'm more than happy to get on um, a call like this and walk them through what their own strategy is, right? Or what yeah. they're what they're trying to accomplish. I can give you an hour to an hour and a half of my time, and and show you exactly what I would do for your specific scenario, right? And so I just charge a nominal fee to do that, but I can get you started. So and that, that you can is go out time and do well spent. Holy cow! He spent time with me and it, it's been absolutely amazing. So right there, that's, right. it's well worth the investment. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> okay. So um, then you've got the, you know, there's, there's two components that I focus on with um, LinkedIn. There's the marketing side of it, you know, with your content that you post. And then there's the sales side of it with getting you in front of the right people, having the right conversations. Okay. So I, I can do one or the other or both combined. Um, four people and um, we do it based on your scenario. So um, I typically mostly work with, as you saw in my sales navigator, um, small to medium sized companies that have um, sales teams of five or more. And, um, but if you're an individual and you need some help building up your own business, I can work with you individually as well on one or both of those components. A lot of times, I will help people with the connecting and the messaging, and I have a fee for that, but then just kind of oversee or consult, if you would, on the content that, that, that they are producing and kind of guide them along with that. So they're responsible for the content, and I'll help them out with the sales. So it really depends on your situation if you're an individual. But for companies, you know, um, that's my sweet spot. It's, you know, a lot of times we have to, to deal with um, – leadership in terms of how to get their employees engaged right. and the right way to get engaged with content, corporate content, and then their own content, how the sales teams and the marketing teams need to work together because so often the marketing teams do not understand what's happening with the salespeople, right? They don't understand the objections they're getting. They don't understand why things are falling apart. And right. they actually don't even understand what's a good lead and a bad lead or a cold lead and a hot lead. Right. So 
we bring those two together, we really help the teams work together, and then we create a machine that's, it's a sales and marketing machine. And by the way, it's real-time analytics. So that was one of the things I, that I always we knew. Today. We should do a part two. <laughs> we could, we could do a whole part two with that, but you know, it real-time analytics are knowing who you're getting in front of the day-to-day -day activity that you're doing and then seeing that progression and it always has to lead to sales. Mm -hmm. We don't focus on just a, kind of a brand building nebulous thing that you can't really measure. Everything that I do is real time measuring. So Fantastic, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the My amazing pleasure. information. I know I'm gonna be digging into this recording probably several times because you've shared You've shared some amazing insight. I'm very excited to put it into play. So I'm going to wrap thank us you. up and say thank you so very much. Reach out, connect with Monty Clark on LinkedIn, follow him. You're going to learn some amazing stuff. And as you follow and you begin to understand that he is a real guy, and I mean genuine, authentic, fun to be around, you're probably going to want to reach out and build a relationship with him. So I encourage you to do so. Now, Happy also to. make sure that you join us next week. We've got another phenomenal speaker. Mona Raglow is going to be talking about a couple of things next week. She is a productivity expert, used to teach, and I think she may still teach, Franklin Covey. And then she's also one of the program directors for an organization called the Central Exchange. I've known Mona for years. She is actually going to also talk about how she has built a knowledge product that she sells during the course of her, you know, she's off making her living over here and she's got a product over here that's also creating revenue and opportunities for her as well. And she's gonna talk about how she has done that in her business. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you log back in and join us next week for another phenomenal speaker. So I'm going to say thank you so much again to Monty and thank you all for logging in and joining us today. And you always should remember one of my best insights that I've picked up early in my career is that you can have anything you want in the world as long as you help enough other people get what they want. So I'm gonna wish you all good day and good selling to you. Take care.